Uh, it's my privilege uh, to uh, here for the seventh time um, to share a state of the city, and I'm proud to uh, have a great team that works uh, alongside me, not only uh, with the city crews, but also um, lots of collaboration. And many of you that are here today are part of that, uh, whether it's the uh, uh, for-profit industrial manufacturing community or the nonprofit quasi-governmental groups of uh, Huntington County Economic Development with Mark Wickersham or the Chamber of Commerce or Steve Kimmel or the Visitors Bureau or the Community Foundation. We have a great group of people across our community that are working hard each and every day uh, to make Huntington a place we're all proud to call home. Uh, what I want to share with you today um, on this first slide is people ask me why I do what I do. That's why I do what I do. Those are a, a whole group of young people that are out at the pump track at Yeoman Park uh, on a beautiful uh, sunny summer day around sunset and they've been out demonstrating their skills to each other, teaching younger riders how to do cool tricks, uh, older riders uh, trying not to break any bones, but uh, it's smiles on faces and creating memories that those 12 and 15 year olds will be talking about 20, 30, 40 years from now. You remember when uh, we were out there riding that pump track and it was new. And what's exciting about the pump track is that idea came from four junior high young people from the Youth Services Bureau uh, about four years ago through Steve Goder, our park <laughs> superintendent. And uh, it was built for about $75,000, and it has been a whole lot of fun. And uh, this is why uh, I do what I do, and I think a lot of us around the city. Um, coming into 2019, I think when I walked in the office on uh, January 2nd, uh, talked with some of the team, it truly felt like uh, the first several years of the administration, the first term, uh, we were doing a lot of catch-up. Uh, projects of uh, necessity, projects of obligation that had to do with a lot of underground stuff that nobody sees. It's kind of like buying a house that you know you're going to restore when you buy it, but you know 80% of your money that you have budgeted for this project is all going to go in the wiring, the foundation, uh, all the stuff that nobody sees and that you really don't get to enjoy. Um, but somewhere around late 2016, and especially now as we move into 2019, <coughs> We are seeing more and more projects around our community that are projects of possibility and opportunity and prosperity. And that's what you're going to see and hear a lot about uh, as we move forward. The team that I have that helps me internally, uh, many of them are here today. Uh, I'm going to have them just stand real quick. Uh, if you're on the senior leadership team, please stand and uh, take a bow. I will mention... Uh, numerous of these people through the process that they go to work each and every day and work hard uh, to create a community that we love to call home. As well, I've acknowledged Steve Kimmel, Mark Wickersham, would you guys just stand and take a bow? Uh, these guys uh, handle the industrial development and the commercial and retail development. They do a great job. Uh, and then also, I don't see or hear yet this morning, but uh, Clerk Treasurer Christy Shear, um, McElhaney, she is the person who is for all matters of purpose, the CFO, she handles about 80 different wallets that uh, are separate funds. If you don't know anything about fund accounting or government accounting, it's basically like having 80 wallets. And there's certain dollars that fall into a wallet. There's certain expenditures you can take money out of a certain wallet for. And she's the one who keeps track of all that good stuff. And she does a great job. In fact, she just shared with me yesterday that for the um, seventh consecutive year, uh, we have had a surplus in our general fund, which means all those people that stood earlier have kept their uh, budgets in check, and uh, we are able to uh, return a lot of investment uh, in, in capital projects with that surplus, whether it's buying much needed equipment or facilities or uh, improvements into our neighborhoods to make life better. The next item we're going to look at, probably the, the 2018 piece, uh, the resistance is what I call Mayor Updike's legacy project uh, back in 2008. Uh, Mayor Updike, along with the help of uh, State Senator or State Representative Dan Leonard, 
uh, secured an NDOT matching fund to improve old State Route 9 and 37, otherwise known as Etna Avenue. Uh, it's out on the south side of town. If you know anything about the geology of the south side of town, uh, it's basically six inches of topsoil on top of 6,000 feet of limestone. Uh, nothing really drains out there very well. Uh, the Etna Avenue corridor basically seeded water uh, from a high level. Uh, it was super elevated, poured out into people's front yards. Water would come toward Etna Avenue but not get to the street, and so everybody would have a lot of flooding. Uh, that project installed 7,000 feet of storm sewer uh, from 12 to 48 inches with a new outfall into the Wabash River. Uh, there are, <laughs> if you've driven Etna Avenue and you haven't counted them yet, just so you know, there are 117 outlets on Etna Avenue. That's a lot, but this was designed to federal highway standards. And uh, so that's used, that's about what? Two thirds more than we might put on a normal city street. So, um, it drains really well. In fact, when we had that flash flood this summer, uh, there was lots of water standing a lot of places, but uh, there wasn't any water standing out on that avenue. This also opens up uh, some opportunities for neighborhood uh, improvements with storm drainage uh, around the Etna Avenue area. So uh, older neighborhoods that have been uh, put in without curbs and gutters, now there's the opportunity as we move forward uh, in partnerships with places like uh, the state uh, IHCDA and OCRA, we're going to be able to make some good things happen uh, over the next five to ten years in neighborhoods because we have this outfall uh, going down the river. Um, if you've seen Etna Avenue, it is beautiful. And you're already seeing uh, economic development, resurgence happening out there. There's uh, an old building, the old Fulton Dairy, has been repurposed as Apollo Caster. Uh, Mike Akers is cooking up some really good ribs out there at the old Baxter's. Uh, um, Lime City Manufacturing is uh, making some great progress. Uh, good things happen. And that was the design from the beginning. Uh, Mayor Updike had, had championed this as an economic development project, and it is truly playing out of that. Next item we have uh, in the spirit of complying with the Clean Water Act of 1972. Um, if you were down in the State Street, just kind of right here all the way to the jail, uh, looked like a war zone most of the summer, uh, but it looks gorgeous now. And uh, State Street now has curbs and gutters once again. Uh, if you were a resident on State Street up till this last year, uh, basically the crown of the street with the old brick street um, and the curbs, uh, the old flagstone curbs had uh, rotted away and you basically didn't have any curbs and gutters on that street anymore. Uh, but now we also have 12 to 42 inch pipes, 6,300 uh, lineal feet of storm sewer, uh, put in a bunch of new sidewalk. Uh, this all ties with the investment made uh, in the last uh, six years with the Boys and Girls Club with their facility, $3.5 million that was put into that neighborhood. Um, a few years back, the city paid cash for the new city services building, uh, where the old Huntington Lumberyard was. Um, that's a beautiful city service campuses that houses our park and our city services, city street departments, and uh, a big improvement to the neighborhood. What's exciting is I talk about prosperity at 423 East State. A young couple uh, owned a brick house three doors down from the jail, uh, backyard of the river, a block and a half south of the railroad tracks. Not always historically things that you want to be close to if you're looking to resell your property. Uh, plus, they put their house up for sale in the middle of the construction season. And uh, had a chance to talk to the couple because I knew them. And they said, we have an opportunity to buy a dream house on the north, uh, a different part of town. And uh, we're not leaving town. Love it. Um, I thought, well, good luck. I hope you get a good price out of your house. Saw them about 10 days later when the percent, when the sold sign went up and they said, we got it sold, uh, we got it sold quickly, and we sold it for more than we asked for it. That house sold in 2009 for 102000 uh, sold this last year for 136 um, or I'm sorry, 138 Now that's about a 30% increase in property value uh, over a, about a 9 or 10 year period. That 
for most of us, where our home is our most important asset, not only economically, but also emotionally, that's prosperity that sets in the hearts of citizens and says, I like living in this neighborhood. I like living in this community. And the people that bought it, because there have been three river cleanups a year for the last several years, the river now is something that's attractive for people who want to buy that home and walk their kayak out the backyard right into the river and float down to the Forks or to Andrews or to LeGro or wherever they want to go. Uh, they can walk to Pizza Junction, they can walk to the Dog, they can walk to the Farmer's Market, uh, they can walk to downtown. There's all kinds of great amenities that come when you're living at 423 East State Street today. Uh, the next item, uh, if I talk about a legacy project for, for my uh, time as mayor, however long that is, is uh, the HK Quarter Brownfield cleanup. Uh, on day one of 2012, a group of us got together and just said this absolutely, this asbestos plant on the east side of Huntington is a blight, not just for those neighborhoods, but for the city as a whole. And it needs to go away. Uh, there's asbestos, there's lead, there's benzene, uh, it's uh, ugly to look at, it's just a mess. And it had been a mess for about 20 years. Uh, Bryn Keplinger and uh, his team at the Redevelopment Commission, along with several others that are here, uh, got to work. Um, trying to get EPA mobilized on anything takes some effort. Uh, it takes persistence. Uh, it takes continued collaboration with state and local officials. I'm glad to see State Senator Zay here today. Uh, you've been working hard this week, Andy? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but it takes all that kind of partnership. So far, federal spending on the HK Quarter project is at $900,000, and we're in the process of testing adjacent residential properties to see what remediation may need to happen there. And we are uh, just on the threshold of the next level of demos once we know what's going on with the chemicals and things that we need to deal with with IDEM and EPA. It doesn't happen fast. It doesn't happen very visibly, very often, uh, but seven buildings have already come down, and uh, we've got a team of people that have been working persistently on this uh, Brownfield project, making good things happen. Another part of what we do all the time is doing our part in the region. How many of you heard about regional cities and the state push on regionalism? Okay, uh, back right before Governor Pence went to become Vice President Pence. Uh, he rolled out the regional cities initiatives to three regions in the state. Uh, one is in Evansville, one is in South Bend, the other is in Fort Wayne. We are part of the Fort Wayne region. $42 million got released and uh, it's all been distributed to quality of life amenities that help Northeast Indiana grow population. <laughs> Because what I'm hearing from Chris Camp at Bendix, or I'm hearing from Karen Williams at CSP, or I'm hearing from Dan Drummond at Huntington Sheet Metal, and what I'm hearing at uh, Ecolab, we all need employees. Uh, unemployment's down to between 3 and 4%. Uh, if you have any economic history background with you, you know that that's historically full employment. Uh, there's always about that much of the population that's in some sort of transition or not in a position to work. But we are trying to attract talent, trying to retain talent, and creating a place worth caring about in Northeast Indiana. And so our part in this is the um, first off is being a part of the Permitting Excellence Coalition with the Mayor and Commissioner's Regional Caucus, and uh, Brent Keplinger and Anthony Goodnight and their teams are part of that. We want to streamline uh, the permitting process so that home builders, uh, industrial builders can make things happen quickly and easily without uh, cumbersome and burdensome red tape. We want to make sure that they have a great product uh, when they're done, the product that's going to have them stay here for decades. Um, down on the bottom left, uh, you see the UB Block Odd Fellows Building. Uh, that's a collaborative effort between the city of Huntington. Uh, we're in for about $3.2 million of cash. Uh, that's a little bit more than it would have cost for us to tear it down and turn it into some sort of a green space, uh, but not much. Uh, you tear down a building that size, uh, you get to two million in a hurry, and then when you're redeveloping it, you can get into a million pretty quick. Um, 
So we're partnering with Pathfinder Services, um, John, uh, Anderson Partners LLC, and Huntington University. And what you see here, uh, the two buildings to the left, uh, one with the uh, the minarets or parapets on it, and the middle building are the old Oddfellows buildings. Uh, the top floor of those two buildings and the whole right building will be 37 market rate apartments. I can't say this, I need your help. It's not age or income restricted. They're not another senior housing apartment complex in downtown Huntington. We've got four, we don't need any more. Uh, we told the people who came and pitched this project, uh, if you talk to us about senior apartments, we'll just bulldoze the thing. Uh, it's got to be market rate apartments. That created its own, its own set of challenges because of the, of the funding that is available. 37 market rate apartments, and then in the center building and the far building, uh, on the first and second floors, you will see uh, the La Fontaine Arts Council connected with the city of Huntington, connected with Pathfinders, starting this spring to roll out uh, a long-awaited, very collaborative, very exciting community arts initiative. Uh, if you've been in Rotary or Optimist the last week or two, you've been hearing Adam Drummond and Katie Strauss uh, talk about what this project's going to look like, uh, what's the low-hanging fruit that they're going to capture here in the early part of 2019 to bring vibrancy and creativity to downtown. Uh, it's a very exciting project. We anticipate that the residential portions uh, will be ready sometime mid-summer and that the uh, commercial portions will be not very far along, but we look for this to become fully operational uh, by the end of 2019. I want to say thanks uh, to John Niederman. Uh, John has been at the forefront of helping make this great project happen. John, would you just stand and take a bow? Please do. Again, there's lots of community partners that help make these things happen. Next item is uh, job creation and investment. Uh, before I get running down here, uh, Mark Wickersham, Chris Camp, uh, Mr. Whitby. Whitby. Whitby, uh you're with a uh, manufacturing concern. Just stand up real quick. Thank you. Uh, in, in the uh, last year, there have been 12 Huntington County industrial projects, and we partner with Huntington County uh, to help uh, the organization called Huntington County Economic Development, led by Mark Wickersham for the last uh, 11, 12 years, uh, go out and make sure that industrial development happens in a big way. Um, seven of those projects were in the city of Huntington. Uh, there was a total of $24 million in capital investment, 125 new jobs were created, and if you hear people saying they just can't find a livable wage job, they're out there. Uh, any job, the average wage uh, for any job that received any kind of uh, uh, state or, or local or county money was $20.61 an hour, and we retained 944 jobs uh, this last year. Uh, we are constantly having conversations with the leaders, the plant managers, and that's why I'm glad to have a couple of them here today, about what their needs are and how they make uh, life happen in a good way. Those of you that have been to my office, you've seen all the different products that are displayed there. It's that reminder that these corporations, these manufacturing concerns are not here to pay taxes, be philanthropic, or provide jobs. They don't know why they're here for the one number one reason? Make money, be profitable. When they're profitable, you know what kind of great things happen? They pay taxes, they provide jobs, and they are incredibly philanthropic. And those of you with nonprofits here, whether it's the Foundation or United Way, you know how philanthropic Ecolab, Bendix, UT, uh, OSD, all these companies are within Huntington, Indiana. So let's give them a round of applause. They make good things happen. Uh, there are some resources for job seekers. Uh, I just put that up there. If any of you want to picture that slide, see me afterwards. But uh, uh, probably the thing that's the most interesting, local jobs. There are 400 jobs available right now within five miles of Huntington. And they range up to $100,000 a year in salary positions. Regionally, Northeast Indiana, 5,800 jobs. How many of you are having trouble keeping employees around right now? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, some of you don't want to confess that because you got <laughs> others in the room you don't want to see that. But uh, yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, Mark and I and Steve and John Niederman, we all hear it. It's it's a challenge, and we're all stepping up our game to attract and retain talent. Uh, the next slide is really exciting. Um, Mayor's going back to Ron Schenkel have been wanting to secure the future of industrial development for the community of Huntington, whether it's the city or the county. We need to make sure that we have land. And our occupancy rate for industrial occupancy right now is around 97%. The unoccupancy, that means 3% of, of clean buildings are available. That's just really, really tight. It's not much different around the region. But what we've been able to do in the last month with the help of HQ and many others is we've been able to acquire 127 acres just to the west of River Fork Industrial Park. And uh, that is rail served, it is highway served, and it will set up uh, opportunities for industrial growth and development for the next 20 or 30 years. So uh, that's a, a long time coming but it's a great, uh, a great opportunity. And there's been a lot of collaboration and it was all locally done. Another exciting thing when it comes to retaining talent is we had a record year of new home construction. And I also want to do a shout out to Huntington County School Corporation for bringing Horace Mann back into the city and not sending kids who lived south of the river all the way out to Lancaster and Andrews. That killed housing development on the south side for about a decade. You put a local school where people with kids want to live, you will see growth happen. 47 of those new homes in 2018, Bryn, how many of them on the south side of town? About 75%. Okay, that's a change. And there's some realtors in the room uh, I'm not saying anything else on the north side is dead. There's some great side stuff going up on the north side and the west side of town. But having this happen on the south side is incredibly exciting. It goes with Aetna Avenue improvements. It goes with the intersection improvements at Waterworks and Aetna. It goes with the improvements going on out at the industrial park. And it goes on with um, getting schools where they need to be to make life good for those who want to call Huntington home. Uh, this is a very, very exciting uh, trend. Uh, there is a housing shortage in Northeast Indiana, uh, but we're doing our part regionally to make sure people have places that they want to call home. When you get a bunch of people together, uh, there's always a few of them that don't do the right thing. And so uh, Chief Hacker, where are you at? Uh, Chief Johnson, public safety guys, just stand up real quick. Um, there they are. Public safety, police and fire, uh, I'm going to throw a shout out to Chief Johnson, our fire chief. He has been very, very um, amicable to work with while he watches the police station uh, get a long overdue building. He's not pounding his fist, you know, wanting a new fire truck right now and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he is a, a team player. And uh, Chief Hacker, he just sits around and giggles uh, with this new police station that's coming our way. Uh, it's really exciting. 115 years ago, the city police department moved into the first floor of the current city building. And they've been there ever since. Um, it's a hodgepodge uh, maze of, you know, tunnels. It's kind of like rats moving through a maze and finding cheese. Uh, what really threw us over the edge, uh, and you probably saw on Good Morning America, there was a great big drug bust down in Arizona where they caught a whole bunch of opioids and a whole bunch of fentanyl. Fentanyl and car fentanyl is scary stuff, people. And our officers are out there dealing with these things. They can no longer field test it out in the field. They've got to bring it back to the station. We have a room about the size of Anthony to the door, from the door to that wall, and from me to that wall, where 35 police officers at any particular time might be gathered trying to work on computers, try to answer the phone, work on cases, do whatever they need to do. And in the middle of all that, there's a workbench about the size of this coffee table. That's where we do our field testing. And we have the black nitro gloves. We also make sure that we have a spotter that's there. 
and we have three doses of Narcan sitting on the counter. Because if one of our guys gets dermal contact with that stuff, they go down. And you got to get them back to life. Those are the kinds of things that we deal with today that we didn't deal with in the 80s, the 60s, and definitely not in 1904. Uh, it is time for us to have a state-of-the-art police station that allows our detectives to come in uh, from over at the old gas station or the gas uh, company building um, and to bring them into one spot, centralized downtown uh, where most of our activity happens and uh, to have a building that allows them to do the kind of work that they need to do to keep citizens safe and to help keep our community strong. Uh, this project is being funded with uh, $2.5 million uh, worth of cash on hand, and the rest of it is being set up with a bond that is being funded by the existing public safety low it tax that is collected off your payroll. Uh, there's no increase to property taxes, there's no increase to payroll taxes to make this happen. It's just strategically using our resources that we have to make the right things happen uh, for our community. And so, uh, uh, I want to say thanks to the police department, thanks to the fire department, because public safety truly works together as a team. There aren't lines when it comes to that, and uh, they make great things happen. <coughs> Next item we have is uh, volunteerism. Uh, I love this one. Again, you see all kinds of kids having fun out here. Here's a little girl with a stick. Uh, have you ever seen anybody as happy with a garbage bag? I mean, it doesn't take much to make that young lady happy, does it? A garbage bag outside picking up trash along the river, that's a good thing. Uh, we've had people out weeding in our parks. Uh, we've got people planting trees. We've got people cleaning the rivers. Um, last year, we had a record year of people using their talents and sowing their love for Huntington. And where's Andrew Rensberger at? He organized. Andrew, stand up. Had a record year. Give him a round of applause. These volunteer projects uh, help people so love to Huntington with the talents and the abilities that they have. They're giving back, uh, they're sharing their talents, they're making memories, they're getting to know people, uh, they're meeting people that work at factories, they're getting leads on jobs, they're getting leads on resources. There's all kinds of stuff that happens when you're slopping through a river or working in a park. Um, volunteerism is truly the poster child of citizenship. And we all talk about how do we raise better citizens for the next generation? It's by engaging them in volunteerism. Helping them understand that it's not the government who does for you, but it's you who do for your community. Uh, we had a record year this year, 5,900 plus volunteers donated nearly 19,366 hours on 158 projects. You take the Google 2016 value of volunteer hour, uh, that had a value to the community of Huntington of in excess of $400,000 last year. That's exciting stuff. Next item is uh, just building a community you love. Uh, over here you see uh, uh, Mitch Hobbs, a uh, former member of ZZ Top, uh, that uh, is uh, sewing uh, a grandson uh, a uh, truck down at our touch a truck event that we have on Father's Day weekend every year downtown where we get out the big toys, uh, let the people see what the uh, big pieces of equipment do. We've been able to uh, purchase a lot of great equipment that help our employees work safely and efficiently uh, without injury to themselves. It's amazing. Uh, Annette and Rhonda, where are you at? Uh, do we have much workplace incidents anymore? We don't have a lot of people not able to retire healthy. Uh, just uh, Annette and Rhonda stand up. These are our two uh, people that uh, see over operations in HR. One of the ones I don't have here, but if any of you are here and you're uh, struggling with your uh, uh, health, uh, health insurance stuff, these two ladies know how to build a wellness culture and how to drive down costs on health insurance. And, uh, We've been glad to partner with OSD and a couple others on making those kinds of great things happen. It's our desire that our workers go home every day uh, whole like they came in, uh, to enjoy life with their family, and then after a 30-year career, 
uh, that they can go home and they can enjoy a retirement without injuries that they've sustained on the job. Um, of course, there's the uh, obligatory picture of the mayor with a bunch of kids on bikes um, at, at the Boys and Girls Club teaching them uh, bike safety. And then down at the bottom, this is my friend Angel. And Angel is playing basketball tomorrow at Huntington North High School with the Special Olympics Basketball Showcase. There will be 500 players and probably 4,000 people out of Huntington North High School. It is one of the high points of anybody's year. If you want to see a group of talented athletes playing for the love of the game, uh, you need to be out there at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning and uh, just spend a half hour. I think the Rotary Club's going to be out there. It's a lot of fun. And more importantly, Angel is going to be there. She is looking forward to seeing you. Community investments. Um, this is just a summary, but uh, the ones I'm just going to point out is up at street paving. If you take the 2018 total, which you notice is uh, about uh, one-third of the total miles we did in the first six years, uh, we had a big year last year. Um, you combine those together, that's right at 34 miles. And uh, 34 miles equals one-third of the city streets. If a city is able to pave their streets once every 20 years, you're hitting a really good standard. So I know we get complaints about potholes, and we get complaints about uh, streets, and we get out there, Bob Cayley and his team, Bob, over here, good to see you. Stand up. <laughs> Bob, thank you. Uh, Anthony does a lot to make this happen along with his team. A special thanks to Senator Zay and the uh, uh, community uh, crossings dollars. Uh, we couldn't do that kind of number uh, without what's happening down at the state and the assessment that's happening with Anthony and his team. Anthony, would you just take a stand real quick? <laughs> And so the, it's, a collab, it's truly a collaborative effort between the local community and the state. Uh, the, the other one I would talk about is sidewalks. Uh, when we talk about what makes communities attractive to retain and attract talent, uh, it is truly walkability, uh, livability, and accessibility. So uh, we have really, in the last couple of years, stepped up. Uh, as you can see, 2.1 miles last year, the previous six years, 3.6 miles. Uh, we're getting more and more serious, freeing up, again, because we're not having to do projects that were uh, as a result of neglect or, um, you know, just need. Uh, we're able to begin to work at a higher level of amenity that makes things feel more prosperous. We're getting the sidewalks done. And that's going to continue going forward. Um, a little bit about the water main, because I want to get Pat Mayor to pop up real quick. Pat, pop up. Um, this is an unseen guy. <laughs> Pat and his crews take care of 100 miles of water line that are under the ground. And you don't notice them till like, this Friday, when it gets, or till, till today's Friday. Till about Tuesday, you'll, you'll start noticing them. I'm going to be in trouble because I'm going to say the water main break word. Uh, when you have 18 degrees below zero going to 58 degrees, crazy stuff happens down on the ground, and uh, they're going to happen whether I say it or not. So, uh, But he makes sure that that system that dates back to the 1890s and up uh, is valves are turned, <laughs> hydrants are flushed, uh, old mains are replaced, um, and then on the flip side, you know, what goes in has to come out. And so he takes care of 100 miles of sewers uh, that go down to our sewer plant and take care of all the stuff that none of us want to think about and uh, keeps our rivers clean. So thanks to Pat. And then last but not least, there at the bottom, the curb ramps. These are the ADA accessible ramps that you see all over town. <coughs> uh, we improve those uh, all the time when we're uh, paving streets, but we are right at about uh, one-third of all of them being updated. All right, <coughs> down to questions, but I want to close with this. Um, I hope each and every one of you here understand that communities and people are not perfect. Uh, 
you can all look at me and you can understand I'm not perfect. My wife uh, married me uh, 38 years ago. Uh, I'm not near the man I was back then in a lot of ways. I'm not the same. Some ways I'm better, some ways I'm worse. But we're always making progress. And what's important is the, the old biblical phrase is that love covers a multitude of sins. Um, we tend to be critical of the imperfections of people that we don't love. We tend to be critical of the imperfections of places that we don't care about. What I would ask each and every one of you and all the citizens of Huntington and our wider community today is to just embrace at an emotional, loving level our community. And we can all focus on the flaws and the faults. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot of great stuff happening. And in spite of the imperfections, there's a lot of progress happening. And a lot of improvement happening. And people are finding ways to show their love for Huntington. And that's what you see here. Uh, it's not perfect, but we're making progress. And we're all committed to making a place that we all love to call home. Thank you so much. Glad to have you here today. Uh, I am available for questions if there are some that any of you have.